That's true. This is Dr. Lills inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington. Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is on assignment, so we have Professor Walker and Professor Bishop. We're going to get them to give their analysis as I provide the presentation from the lecturer on the top seven for the mid-major poll rankings in week number seven. With that being said, man, it's tough in the mid-major division. It's teams with five wins, just two losses, that can't get in the top seven. So I want to mm. see your thoughts. Not a lot of changes at the top as we still have undefeated teams, only undefeated teams in HBCU sports. They continue to do that. But with that being said, dropping out this week was Tuskegee Golden Tigers 5-2, and 4-1. and one. Fort Valley State Wildcats also dropped out this week at 5-2, five 5-1. and, two, five and one. Shout out to Jamie as he got the call uh, doing that Tuskegee Golden Tigers. Obviously, we played another call. We couldn't play yours. We didn't want to get pinched, as they say. Uh, but we wanted to give you kudos because you made a great call yourself. With that being said, uh, receiving votes this week, John C. C. Smith Golden Bulls are 5-2, 4-1, 116 points outside of the top 10. Receiving votes are also Fayetteville State. I mean, Tuskegee Golden Tigers, I should say, at 5-2, 4-1, 113 points. Fort Valley State Wildcats are 5-2, five 5-1 and five and with 112 points. Let's get in the top seven. Edward Water Tigers, 5-2, five 5-1 five and one with their Hail Mary that was answered. Uh, jump into the poll rankings at 106 points. They were not ranked last week, but they're in there now after a big win. Improved to 5-2. More importantly, five and one in the conference race. At number six, talk about the Fayetteville State Broncos. They're actually back in the top seven at five and two, five and zero, oh, as they quietly are rolling and getting things done. 114 points. They were not ranked last week as they are in the top seven. At number five, we get to some familiar names: Miles Golden Bears at five and two, four and one. They moved back up in the poll two spots this week. 131 points as they were previously ranked seven. At number four, Virginia Union Panthers, six and one, four and one. They're rolling, 136 points. They was previously ranked six, setting up what could be a barn burner at the end of the year. They're ranked number four. At number three, Allen Yellow Jackets, surprised to many people this year, had a big win, six and one, four and one, bounce back. They were previously ranked five, so they move up two spots, 140 points. At number two, should not be a surprise. Virginia State Trojans, 7-0, 5-0. Three first-place votes, 183 points, but they remain at number two. At number one, you have the Benedict Titans, 7-0, 5-0. No team is hotter at the mid-major level, I would say, especially when you think about what they did last year. They have six first-place votes to room, reigning mid-major HBCU national champions, and they keep rolling and get it done, 186 points. What a big Thursday night victory last week. Uh, they are rolling. With that being said, we're going to let our guests go first. Jamie Walker, what are your thoughts in terms of the top seven poll? I will say this before you give your answer. You want it back on the show, you might want to think twice. No, just <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm going to tell you what. I, I, I like this poll. I like it uh, a lot. Smart, smart, um, smart man, smart man. Yeah, you know, I, I, I like it. Now, if I were to change anything, and I wouldn't, but if I were to change anything, um, I don't think Fayetteville State is getting enough love. Um, one of the only ones that's that's defeated Virginia Union. Um, you know, even though it was a close game, I know AD Drew uh, on the road. Another show, you know, talked about um, you know them beating him in the hurricane and whatnot. But Fayetteville State continues to win. <laughs> um, <laughs> continues to win uh, those close games. They really do. Um, they're battle tested. Uh, I know they have a big one. I think either they've already beat Winston or they have one coming up against Winston Salem State. So I think, you know, they continue to to win those games, um, representing that CRAA South. And and um uh, I don't think they're getting enough love. I know Stephen J. Gaither would would, you know, be be shocked because he doesn't think I give the CIAA enough love over the SIAC. Uh, but you know, Fayetteville State is right up there. Um I'll say Allen took a big leap. Um, after faltering to, to Fort Valley the week before, getting that win this week um, has catapulted them in this poll. So I'm going to tell you what, um, both are playing good ball, and and kudos to the SIAC and Commissioner Anthony Holloman for taking that format and changing it from a north or from a from a divisional format to now 
the absolute sprint to the top when it comes to the end of that season. You're going to see some phenomenal games. With that being said, before to you, Charles, uh, Roy, if you would flash up the top seven poll rankings again for those that want to see the major, got somebody looking for it. Uh, but good points, Jamie. Very good points in terms of that. Shout out as you spoke of his name, Stephen Gaither. He jumped in there. He said, if this, you win so ugly. But I have to agree with you. Your points are valid in terms of the fact they just win. We'll see. They're kind of Ooh. a chance. And they'll get to prove their points. But at some point, you are what you are. You keep winning. So let me go to you, Charles, and get your thoughts in the top seven and see where you land this week. Well, I was curious. I was waiting to see if Edward Waters would land uh, in that top seven. So kudos <clears throat> to Edward Waters and, and their prolific offense. Uh, I was waiting to see when they make their debut in the top seven. So here they are. Uh, they have a young man, Jaron Russell. Uh, and, Jamie, you got an opportunity to see him up close this past uh, weekend. But 15 touchdowns on the season. He's averaging 277 yards through the air. Uh, they look to be a, a, a scary little team sitting out there. They ruined the homecoming 32,000 Tuskegee fans. So, uh, kudos, <laughs> you know, kudos. Uh, and you take a look at the at, – at, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with you, uh, Fort Valley. This, oh, I want to stick them in there because they're, they're five and one. But you know, I, I can't argue with the teams that are sitting in front of them. I mean, I think these are all very worthy teams sitting in front of them. Like you said, Allen, uh, good bounce back win this past weekend, and Benedict. I just, ugh, boy, <laughs> it's gonna be a second or two before you know we, we see a a team that I think could just really match up with Benedict real tough. So. I'm waiting on Benedict Allen. That should be fun. That's a good one. That should be fun at the end of the year. We talked about the Virginia and Virginia State, but you go to the out of the CIAA, but you go to SIC, that Benedict Allen at the end of the year could be very special. 